Hey you guys, what's up? Strange here. Figured that this month is September, so I should make some videos of the members of Class 7. And mainly just because that in September of 2013, I think, yep, 2013, that Cold Steel 1 came out. So we're getting to that 10 year anniversary here pretty close, pretty soon here. So if we're doing any member of Class 7, we might as well start with Reen. Now with Reen, I really like him. He's one of my favorite characters. So I also, that's another, probably another reason I also wanted to start with him. He kind of reaches this uh, anime harm trope, but he goes in a good direction with it. And I got to give him props for that. The writing there is usually I hate that type of writing, but with Reen, I specifically love it. And I think it fits his character as well as kind of having almost seeming bland, but he does have this kind of guilt to him. Um, and I love that with Reen. Uh, but anyway, uh, spoilers ahead for Cold Steel 1, 2, 3, 4, and Reverie as well. I haven't watched the anime yet, so uh, if there's anything I'm missing, please tell me in the comments below. And anyway, we'll get into it. Now with Reen, he starts off the story, at least we see him starting off the story, uh, coming to Thor's and um, being generally uh, pretty well-mannered. He tries to save Alyssa from falling. That doesn't turn out too well, and he's pretty nice to everybody we see. Um, but he, you can tell he doesn't really have a place to fit in. Um, Machias gets on Reen because Machias thinks he's a noble at the time or a full noble. And Reen has to explain that he's not really a noble, but he isn't really a commoner either. And I think that's where uh, the entertainment with Reen's character comes into play here. Mainly just because we get to see Reen go through this entire arc and we could see it that this is an ongoing arc with him. This is something that's been consistent with him. We see that he is a lonely character who doesn't really have any place, one place to call home. He feels adopted and feel it, you could tell he feels indebted to uh, Baron Schwarzer, his father. You can tell he feels indebted to him. And for that reason, I think it lends credence to him trying his best to make it up to everyone, him not feeling like he's in any one place. So that leads him to want to do student council stuff and student council deeds and everything like that, going around the school, helping out Toa. Uh, this also allows him to build some interpersonal relationships to where people kind of rely on Reen to kind of vent to and kind of lean on. And even at this moment still, when Reen is the uh, pillar for everybody's emotional states in the story, it seems, he still doesn't realize his u his usefulness to everybody. Now, he eventually kind of gains a favor with the entirety of Class 7, kind of acting as a pseudo-leader, because, again, he can understand both the viewpoints of a commoner and a noble, and for that reason, I think he makes himself, well, not even makes himself, but everybody makes him a leader. And I can really dig that when it comes down to a story when he doesn't make himself the leader, but everybody else makes him the leader and makes him feel even more valued. And even still at this point, Reen doesn't feel like he's like he's valued. Or he can tell he has friends, it seems, and you could tell he's happier that he has friends, but he has no one place to belong. And this backstory we see, and we're told throughout the story of Cold Steel 1, I think 2 as well, that when he's learning the eight leaves style, that he had to stop at a beginner because he couldn't master uh, what Master Kafai was trying to teach him. This was, in my opinion, already a breaking point for Reen in a way. Not in a bad way, but something that kind of could prepare him for the future. Uh, again, since Elise, Elise and everybody in that, uh, the village that he comes from, the uh, Springs Village, the Hot Springs Village, they aren't really, they're nobles, yes, but they are so secluded from everyone else that it doesn't really matter, if that makes sense. Everybody sees them as just kind of owning the village, which is a great thing for Reen, at least, because he was able to go around and make friends. But again, he doesn't have any friends when he leaves. There's nobody to really rely on. He comes to Thor's kind of with n nothing with no bearing back home, of course, other than his family. Now, um, throughout the story, we eventually learn that he is the son of Giliath Osborne, the Chancellor, and Giliath was kind of taken over by a divine, divine knight, Ishmelga, but 
we kind of see this take place as Gilgith kind of knows this throughout the, or he of course knows it throughout the entirety of the story. So we see, when we see Reen interact with Osborne, there's this kind of air of um, anonymity, if that's the correct word, there with him. And to me, that built up Osborne's character separately from Reen's already. Because we knew, and the story kind of heavily uh, played into these two are connected in some way. Now, in the past Trails games, right now I'm playing Trails 3, or sorry, Trails in the, Cold, uh, Trails in the Sky 3, my bad. Uh, in the past games, it kind of seems like there is, the Chancellor is just this bad guy, just this kind of dictator-esque character that is kind of just moving for the emperor and or moving yeah for the emperor and the emperor isn't moving him but with reen it seems like he is kind of like this figure of mythical proportions it seems you finally meet him and it's more impressive than meeting the prince who started up the class because you get to meet the blood and iron chancellor and he meets you and he greets you warmly so that's kind of our first hint there is of him kind of having a kind of soft spot for Reen. And ironically, I mean, soft spot in his heart, but ironically, Reen's heart is, or was originally, Gilead's heart. Um, We have, and we see throughout the throughout the story with Reen, um, he kind of tries to make everyone around him feel better. And whenever things turn out not his way, it kind of, or not his way in the way that like his way exactly, if that makes sense. So, if an instance is uh, Crow's passing away in Cold Steel 2. So, Crow passes away in Cold Steel 2, and we see with Reen that that kind of makes him depressed, I guess, at the end. And, you know, deservingly so, it makes sense. But Crow isn't really with Class 7 that long. He's only with him for one expedition. And even then, Reen still cares about Crow. Reen still put his mind to Crow, and he still lost him, and that almost breaks Reen. Usually, Reen, at some point throughout every single Cold Steel, has a breaking point. At Cold Steel 1, he gets sent away from, uh, Cold Steel, yeah, Cold Steel 1, he gets sent away from his friends. Cold Steel 2, he gets, uh, Crow dies, and that was his breaking point. Cold Steel 3, he gets captured, and then Cold Steel, uh, or is losing, and, you know, the whole million thing happens. In Cold Steel 4, um, he is what, well, no, sorry, Reverie. I think Reverie is the one where he doesn't really have a breaking point. He has to fight himself. And that kind of lends credence to he's finally actually coming to accept him for him. He for who he is, if that makes sense. And to me, that makes the character cooler. I think that every character needs to have their flaws. And if Reen didn't have those flaws, he wouldn't be such a good character. So, Having those flaws and having those important character distinctions of, hey, your character has it all in this sense, right? And one point here, he has it all with friends and everything, but he has, in general, he feel like, it feels like Reen has no self-worth and has no, like, he doesn't value himself too high above the others. Reen isn't necessarily, I wouldn't call him humble. I would not say he's humble. I think he just actually doesn't know how much, how skillful he is. Um, uh, the Radiant Blade Master, Victor Arce, Laura's dad, points that out with Reen. I think it was in the first game, yeah. In the first game, he points that out, saying that, hey, Reen, you don't know, like, just how strong you could potentially be. Even with the Ogre at 17, he's able, he's not able to, you know, stand one-on-one -on -one with Arce or anything, but he is able to kind of hold his own in some sense of the word, in some sense. Not, he wasn't close, nowhere close, but... He was kind of able to impress the Blade Master, which was another plus. Um, it doesn't help that, as far as we know, as far as I know, I think there's only three Eight Leaves students that we know of. We have Estelle's dad. We have um, Arios from Crossbell, and then we have Reen. Now, Arios is the one we have we have seen use a sword. Estelle's dad, we have not seen. I have not. We don't. We have not seen him pick up a sword, as far as I know. As far as I know, only played the Cold Steel games, but from every it seems like it says he says it's been years since he's picked up a sword. Reen has picked up a sword. Obviously, his. Uh, I don't know if his sword ever has a name or gets a name. Uh, on the in the game, it seems like his name Makatsuki a lot, but uh, Reen's sword 
uh, Reen wields a sword and Arios wields a sword. And they both will talk about uh, Kafai. And it's very interesting to see, or I wanted to see more of the two fight and the two have uh, distinctions. Because with Reen, it's specifically mentioned that his way and his uh, school of fighting is void. Arios, I believe, is wind, and we don't, I don't know Estelle's dads yet. Hopefully I will in the later games. I'm trying to play the other games. Hopefully I'll catch up. I, I will I will play those other games. Um, but yeah. Um Reen overall, there's so much to talk about with this character as far as where he could go, with or where he has been at least. Where we've been talking about where he has been. Uh where he is right now, at least in terms of the story, in terms of where he is uh in this current day is it seems like he's in the eastern kingdom still looking for kafai i could assume i haven't played uh chrono kaseki one or two but it seems like he's still in the east side last time he left off he kind of met his match and that's interesting to see that not even his match somebody who seemed like completely outclassed him and his sword got broken so I'm really interested to see what next we get to see and if he's going to get a new weapon or if he's going to go back for training and actually finish his training because he's still technically, although he is a divine blade, uh, it doesn't seem like it seemed like he had to train himself. He never really went under the full training of Kafai. So that's where he is right now. Uh, and of course, it seems like he's going to be chilling at home, maybe teaching a new class seven, which I'd be interested in. But at the same time, that's that's more people we're adding to the mix of trails, which we already have enough people. At this point, we should only be adding the set necessary members, not more. We already have old, old class seven, new class seven. It kind of irked me when we got the those distinctions. Just pile them up together, put them together. Class seven. Um. Now we have where he's gonna go, and where he's gonna go in terms of the story. And all we can do is assume, theory craft, make uh, make guesses. With me, I think Reen is definitely going to go the route of solo for these next few games. We don't know what's happening in the Eastern Kingdom. So it seems like after we're done with Van, we're probably going to maybe get an Eastern Kingdom game. Hopefully with the... I know we technically already got a church game with Kevin. and uh, But I want another game fo focusing on being a Dominion. I don't think we've seen the third Dominion. I think we've seen the fourth one in Chrono Kaseki, unless I'm tripping. Fifth one is Kevin. Second one's Thomas, first one's Ayn. So I don't think we've seen the third one. And I would love to see the third Dominion, mainly just because, especially if it's if he's if he or she is in the Eastern Kingdom. That would be cool. I think it would be really cool to just see what the Eastern Kingdom holds. Um, of course, that might allude to them being Japan, basically, as far as like Erebonian Empire being represents this country, Calvert represents this country, Libero represents this country. Um, and then we could see that, oh, like maybe, for instance, uh, the Eastern Kingdom is a mixture of Japan and China. That would be cool. I would like that a lot. And that could ma mainly make a whole new storyline for Reen where he kind of has to start over. I want a Class 7 game. Don't get me wrong. I love Class 7, but I want a game with Reen where it's kind of just Reen. It's not him doing anything super crazy with class seven but him kind of finding and getting new companions because we see class seven kind of regroup and reunite every single game in the first game they're coming together and that's them building their team and building the trust second game marine has to go and bring them back together third game the Ouroboros stuff is all popping off and uh Reen has to again the divine knight as well the, the whole twilight plan um Reen has to go and he has to bring them again together um and then the fourth game they're already together again so we keep on just seeing gameplays and, and repeat repetition of class seven getting back together kind of just want to see reen kind of find new friends not in a bad way as in to show class seven to the side but in, in a way of class seven reen being more than a teacher he can be definitely more than a teacher there should be him being like at the end when he's at his 40s returning but right now he could be doing way more it's kind of like almost a waste, I think. Like when you have Crow just in Jirai chilling out, uh, where he is just like, hey, things are popping off, Crow. You have to come, you know, you have to come with us. Help us out. But, yeah. Anyway, I think where he could go is he has a, he has a really bright future. He could solve, he could, he has a lot of potential, especially with the ogre power still being there. 
so he can increase himself. He has another farm. He still has a second farm. Love that. And yeah, I think with Reen, it's gonna be interesting seeing um the what friends he picks up along this new journey. Because Marco, mark my words, mark my words, he's going to make some new friends. He's going to pick up some new people in this journey of his. It's not just going to be Reen in Class 7 again or Reen in new Class 7 again. I think it's going to be Reen and uh, the people that have known all the style of the eight leaves. I think Kafai probably has more than just one fighting style. It's going to be uh, really cool to see Kafai hopefully fight other Blade Masters. Maybe Reen calls out everybody there. So we do get Class 7 again, but we also get to see the Golden Rakshasa uh, and Radiant Blade Master. And, man, I just remember these. I love that about Charles. Charles has a great uh, nicknaming system, epithet system, because it helps me remember them. It helps me, rather than, like, saying, like, oh, Victor Arce, I can say, oh, Blade Master, and have them all come out there and fight. Hopefully, Kafai is really strong. I hope we get to see uh, just how strong he is. He's probably going to be a little bit weaker. He's probably going to have the, the old anime archetype of I used to be stronger in my prime, which, again, completely fine. That's okay. I know Trails does archetypes really well. They make them fun. They make them cool. And they make them lovable. And that's the most important part is making sure your players can love the characters. I can't. If you can make your players love the characters, which we have loved the characters of Trails, then you'll always have people sticking around, always have people playing the games. But yeah, we get to see uh, later on with Reen that he's going to probably be a um, more of a leader for Class 7. We get to see what Class 7 is really going to be in the future. Hopefully they kind of form an actual group rather than it being just Class 7. They get to form a full-on group because... There's some characters that are just kind of left, like, ass out. Like, there's nothing there for them. Um, Toa, George, Angelica, they're not really... As much as I dislike Angelica, there's not really a place for her to fit in. Crow's with Class 7 now, it seems, so they can't really have the George, Toa, Crow, Angelica little combo thing that they had beforehand. And I think Toa, honestly, deserves to be with Class 7 in that sense that she helped them out a lot. And if it wasn't for her, literally, that there probably wouldn't be the Class 7 we know today. Toa deserves more credit. Massively deserves more credit. But um, I don't think there's anything else to talk about as far as Reen. I could be forgetting something major. Watch me forget something insanely major. But I don't think there's anything else to forget about. Honestly, I want to do another little bit of a chill video. Uh, bear with me on these videos. I kind of want to pump them out uh once every two days but sometimes uh that kind of gets delayed um i've been using a new uh program called davinci resolve or a new program for me called davinci resolve and so i'm just trying to learn that so just bear with me be patient with me um and yeah hopefully reen gets a little bit more screen time after the calvert arc i'm very 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 looking forward to what reen is going to do against or not Reen against anybody, but Reen, how he's going to talk to Van. I would love to see that. And I'd especially love to voice act Van. I think I'm very... These new characters are going to be cool to see uh, push into the world and how they're going to play their part and play their role. Anyway, um, I'm going to be logging off here. And yeah, I hope you guys have a good one. Uh, and please keep living.